Wow. Well, it's that time of year when we start thinking about tax returns and RSP contributions. But as Canadians, are we doing a good job planning for retirement? As we saw from that clip, I don't think so. maybe we're not. <laughs> According to a report released by the Broadbent Institute, half of Canadians aged 55 to 64 who don't have an employer pension have less than $3,000 wow. saved up for retirement. And about 47% of Canadians currently have no employer pension and even fewer younger workers have employer pen pensions. Well, Karen Beerland is the president and CEO of Faith Life Financial, and she joins us today to talk about how we can wisely save for retirement and keep contributing to our RRSPs. Welcome, Karen. Uh, it's a delight to be here. Thank you. Now, why are we saving? Why aren't we saving? Yeah. We haven't developed the habit. Hmm. Like anything else, financial planning is a process. It's not a one-time hit. It's not a one-time wonder. It's not wishful thinking, and unfortunately, that's the kind of planning that far too many Canadians use. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of as soon as you can, early in life, mm -hmm. uh, start setting aside what you can. It doesn't have to be a huge amount, because when you have the power of earnings and interest yeah. working with you over a long period of time, the the uh, progress you can make is tremendous. Mm. I don't and think it's we've never taught, too late. We haven't taught young people well. No. to do that right mm -hmm. we everybody uh, once you get 15 or 16 you start having that part-time job you start spending stuff and we we love because you have money to spend we have money to spend yeah. fun, right? but i think we need to really teach them at 15 16 so you start having part-time jobs we need to teach them and, and develop that culture of savings early don't we yeah well i've met a lot of really incredible people in the work that i do and some of the, those that really, really stand out for me are those that teach their very young children mm. Mm. Yeah. not just to spend, but to save yep. and to share. And it's developing that mindset and the ability, the discipline to do that very early that can make all the difference. And I'm not suggesting at all that the people who haven't been able to uh, save enough to retire don't have discipline and don't have a heart to do it, but sure. what they're missing is the plan. And it's really, really critical that much sooner than later they sit down with someone who can help them, an advisor who can help them, not only understand what they need and what they want, but how they're going to get there, write it down, and then have that individual monitor and encourage the implementation of that plan. The results of having a plan and not having a plan are huge. Those who have a financial advisor and work with them effectively over a period of time usually have twice the assets mm. than those who don't have a plan. So it's being an intentional, and God teaches us that in so many different ways. It's about being intentional mm. about not just spending, but saving and sharing. Finances can be kind of overwhelming though, right? When we just think about money and I don't know, it just seems overwhelming sure. at times. So, you know, I had an interesting conversation. I'm going to call out my brother, my youngest brother. He's 10 years younger than me. And we had an interesting conversation about RRSPs and he does not believe in it. He saves in other ways, but does not believe in RRSPs. So explain to us why we should put money in RRSPs. Well, there are a number of uh, different vehicles that you can use. Okay. For younger people, I would probably recommend a TFSA because okay. the difference... That's a tax-free savings account. Yes, it is. Yeah. And the difference there is that the uh, money that is growing in that account is tax-free. Mm -hmm. You don't get the tax benefit that you do, the deduction that you get uh, with an RSP. But when you're in a lower income bracket, that's the time to use a TFSA. Mm -hmm. When you're a higher income bracket, that's the time to use an RRSP. Right. So the strategy is really mm -hmm. simple. When you're older and you've got more tax room and higher income, you have to pay more taxes. Take the money, some money out of your TFSA that's been growing there tax-free mm -hmm. and put it into your RRSP, get the tax deductions, and continue to grow your retirement savings plan. A lot of people don't really understand what an RRSP is. And I think there's, it's an important educating time for us. Yeah, yeah. What does it mean to register your savings? It's registered because it's a government-sponsored program that allows you to um, uh, deduct the contribution that you've made from your income tax. So you so that's can't, huge. Oh, it's huge. It's, it, it's tremendous because it not only helps you uh, save money, it also helps you save more money because right. you can take that return and plow it back in to your savings opportunities. Now, I've been contributing to my RSP 
for quite a while. In my 20s, I started. That's awesome. And thanks. That is Pat awesome. myself on the back Well there. done. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, and so is there a certain amount that you should start saving? Like how much should you aim for? I always wonder about those things. Am I saving enough? Am I putting aside enough? It's usually 10%. Okay. Um, is, is a really good figure to aim for. And depending, it really depends on when you're starting. Because as I mentioned before, you know, the power of compounding interest and investments is huge over time. Mm. Um, so if you're starting early, a smaller percentage of your income can work. But if you're starting later, to the greatest degree that you can, mm. uh, the most that you can put in. Because people are living longer. Uh, I heard recently that the average uh, life expectancy for women in South Korea is 90. Wow. Now, in Canada, it's 84, but still, that's a long time that we're living. There's a, a stat that I thought was very shocking to me. 18% mm. of people that, have a, uh, that do not have a plan feel that they have uh, enough for retirement. 51% of people that do have a plan felt that they had enough. 18% yep. of people mm. that don't have a plan don't know what they're doing, but they still don't have a plan. Yeah. Right. Uh, how would you start that conversation? That's called denial, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, that is. Yeah. I'm just really wondering. Is. But I mean, they need to start that conversation with someone, don't right. they? Mm. I'd start that conversation with recognizing that it's never too late to start. It's never too late. So get rid of the guilt. Get rid of the why didn't I before kind of thinking. Right. And just start to consider what your needs are, uh, what kind of uh, income do you have and how are you going to set aside that income given your lifestyle what lifestyle changes might you be able to make and then start the plan by writing it down with someone who knows what they're doing and I recommend strongly that you use a financial advisor and then have that advisor be your coach mm. to help you continue to implement it in a disciplined fashion and it works. So even if you know you're 55 and as we saw in that clip yeah. I mean yeah. that one lady she's approaching 60 has not really saved, it's never too late, you're never saying. Never too late, never, ever too late. Okay. Yeah. I think education is so huge. Uh, I think people have this concept, like you said, I haven't done it now, so where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just gonna let it go by happenstance and, and, and see what happens. It's, it's the worst and, plan. And I think it's really important for them to not only know that it, A, it's not too late, but is what, what would actually happen at 60 or 65 and I think it's good for them to get a picture, but they can't generally get that picture by themselves. No. They need to talk to somebody. And I know that I, I'm a, a client of Faith Life Financial, and I think uh, getting along get with a, uh, an advisor to help you understand where you realistically are and why it's not too late. It's good to know where that, uh, that line is. Well, and the way I look at it, um, at Faith Life Financial, we're really passionate about blending faith and finances to be wise with money and to live generously. Mm -hmm. And wisdom isn't something that you get overnight. That's something that you gather through the counsel of others mm -hmm. and the practice of doing the right things at the right time. So it's, it's a collaborative effort. Very few people are successful in terms of meeting their retirement goals and the lifestyle goals, whether that's giving or you know living in a, on, on a mountaintop. Um, they won't normally be able to reach it with, without the help of others who I know what some, they're doing. I think some people are probably um, Again, I'll use the word overwhelmed in thinking of having a financial advisor, thinking I don't have as much money. Right. Maybe I don't have as much to, to, to you know, invest in. Are those reasons to not have a financial advisor? Never, okay. never, ever. Um, start that conversation, figure it out, figure out what your plan is and then how to implement it, and you will see a difference. I mean, for some people who start late, they're going to have to work longer, but it doesn't mean that you can't address it in a very substantive and, and important way. And at Faith Life Financial, we're very happy to sit down with you to help you identify what your goals are, write that plan down, write it so you know what you're talking about, and then uh, get the help that you need to implement it. It doesn't cost you anything to start the conversation. Absolutely. I think that's important to know mm -hmm. too. Good point. To start it. Yeah. yeah, very good. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.